joyful way it's your weekday morning talk show inviting you to start your day with a triple shot of good vibes and now here's your host the queen of joy herself jessica dugas good monday morning everybody happy may 9th 2022 um i had mother's day yesterday to those of you that were celebrating uh it was a great day here it was a beautiful weather outside here in florence alabama and um I got to get out for a little while, which was nice, um, and also was treated to to many things by my children, which was lovely. And I feel like I have arrived. Uh, <laughs> Understand. So I, you know, I yesterday was the first Mother's Day in my history of Mother's Day for the last 21 years that uh my kids planned stuff without my husband knowing. He had no he had no idea. They orchestrated things themselves and and that was it was neat because um, you know, it just we're, we're used to dad, you know, taking taking the reins with that. But my son is going, my oldest is gonna be uh 21 in a few weeks. I'm in denial. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to cry on air today. <laughs> um, but it was, it was a great time. Um, so my oldest uh, got me, we have like this thing for Ninja products in our kitchen. And I love a lot of the Ninja stuff that comes out. And he got me this toaster um, that it flips it's a very transformer type thing. It flips, you put the, you can, you can broil and bake and, but it, you know, it does all of this stuff. And, um, and so that was really neat. Uh, and so getting to play with that a little bit. And then, um, my, uh, younger son is super into electronics and his, um, gift to me was actually cleaning out my fan. I have a tall oscillating fan in my bedroom and, um, it, 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 I've had it for a long time. I have to have the air moving. We have talked about this before. Um, I need to have the air moving at all times. Uh, and so, it needed to be cleaned out. And for I don't know why for the life of me that these fans do not come with an easier way to clean them because, um, you know, fans collect a lot of dust all the time. And these fans that are like tower fans, like the one I have, there is, unless you have like a commercial grade vacuum, there is no getting the dust out. Like there, you just can't, there, it will not it will not get it out, a regular vacuum. So um, 
my so my younger son took the whole fan out to his little workshop that he has out in the garage and took the entire thing apart cleaned it for me and everything else and it doesn't make funny noises anymore it doesn't like it and it was lovely so he did that for me and then my oldest daughter um cooked for me yesterday which you guys know that nina is always cooking all the time um and baking and all of that but she made me um, a beautiful cake. I have to share it with you guys. I'm going to see if I can show a picture. Okay. Here's the cake that Nina made me and it was gorgeous and be and delicious, of course. Um, and vegan, of course, we know, we know that we do that here. Um, but it was delicious. It was wonderful. And so I appreciated her for that. My next oldest daughter, um, gave, uh, gave me a facial. She did my makeup yesterday. That's kind of, I loved how all of my kids were like, leaning into their, their things that they were, that, that make them special. And, um, and uh, things that make them that that they feel like makes them matter. And that ties into what we're talking about on our show today. Uh, we have Shif Ramalka back today to uh, talk about mattering with us. And today we're going to kind of, I think we're going to answer some of the question that I think is looming over everyone's head after last week, which um, you know, last week we talked about what it, what does it mean to matter? What is mattering exactly? And so the question that's left on a lot of people's mind, I think is, so what is it, what does it matter to even, even talk about this, to explore this? And today she's going to answer the question, how does our mattering affect how we show up in our lives? And I think this helps to answer a little bit into that question of why does it matter to matter, to talk about mattering and, and all of that. So I'm excited to dive into that with Shifra in a little bit here. Listen, if you're joining us live or on the replay, I would love for you to head over to the comment section. Let me know what is bringing you joy today. If you celebrated Mother's Day yesterday, let me know how your weekend was and all of that um, in the comment section. Later on in the show, you can also go to projectjoypodcast.com. You can click the join live button and you can actually share us, uh, come join us at the end of the show and to ask any questions or comments that you might have for our guests about mattering. Um, so again, that's projectjoypodcast.com. Um, so to, to finish my story, uh, my, so my, uh, Marjean did my makeup and all of that. We had fun with that. And then my younger two daughters came in in the morning and they had made me, um, they made me some little cards. They had all these stickers in there in their little craft room. They made me some little cards there. So that was very nice. And I have them in the back now. They wanted to make sure that they were in a place. Oh, my microphone's in the way. They wanted to make sure they were in a place where the people could see them. There we go. Okay. So, and then they, they brought me this lovely flower and orchid and all of that. So it was all very nice. And then, um, went to went with my husband to pick my son up from work. And there is a mural uh, downtown Florence, Alabama has a ton of murals um, everywhere, uh, spray paint, and they're go and some of them are regular paint. They're gorgeous. And uh, the one mural that I wanted to get, I will not be showing you until Throwback Thursday, the last Thursday this month with Kevin Kylie. You guys will see if you are in our Discord community in the Throwback Thursday channel, you will see a little sneak peek of that. Um, and so you can, you can see a sneak peek, but I cannot show you on here. We also went to see some fruit. Uh, there was a big fruit mural that was painted, which was gorgeous. And I would tell you, you cannot bring the vegans to the fruit mural. You can't, you can't do it. They just, they just act crazy. Um, but we had a good time going to see some of the spray paint. I got to see the, um, there was a spray paint mural in, we have a, um, an alleyway called Graffiti Alley, which is blocked off by the city. And also um, one of the arts associations here um, as a way to have people be able to channel their creativity into one place instead of graffitiing the entire planet. Um, and so this whole alleyway, people can come at any time and day or night and um, spray paint to their heart's content. And this particular mural was done 
um, in honor of Betty White. I thought it was beautiful. And uh, I finally went down and got to see it yesterday. So that was nice as well. Um, so it was a good day. Wonderful. I appreciate my family for um, making the day special for me. It was lovely. Um, Anne-Marie is here this morning. Good morning, Anne-Marie. It is good to see you today. Uh, for the rest of you that are here and being quiet, I would love for you to say hi, say hello, good morning, let me know where you're joining from, and of course, what is bringing you joy today. Uh, for National Days today, uh, we have a few things going on. It is Europe Day, uh, when you can learn lots of things about Europe. I went down the rabbit hole of how many languages are spoken, how many countries are a part of Europe, all of that, things that, of course, as someone who's geographically challenged, as I have shared I am, um, I had a good time finding out facts that I never knew before. Um, it is also apparently today and yesterday, a time of remembrance and reconciliation on May 8th and 9th, the day is set aside as the time of remembrance and reconciliation for those who lost their lives during the Second World War. These two days recognize the sacrifices and loss of military and civilians during the Second Global War. Um, and so uh, it, there's lots of facts you can find out if you go to nationaldaycalendar.com and click on the event today, you can learn lots of information about this time of remembrance and reconciliation day and the history of it. So I encourage you to do that today as well. Um, it is also National Alphabet Magnet Day. See, there's all these days that we did not know were a thing. Uh, beautiful letters and clever language come together in one celebration on May 9th. National Alphabet Magnet Day recognizes the ingenuity and creativity of making words from magnetic letters. Have you ever spent the morning rearranging the alphabet magnets on your fridge while you sip your coffee? Perhaps your child sits at your feet practicing the alphabet while shuffling the letters. Let me know if any of you have alphabet letters on your fridge. I currently do not. Um, we have a whiteboard uh, that's magnet in the kids' homeschool room that they have alphabet letters somewhere, but they're kind of um, getting to where they're, they're not wanting to play with those. But my grandparents had them on, the, there was an old um, chalkboard at the bottom of the stairs in their basement. And they used to have the alphabet letters on there. And when my grandmother would go down to do laundry, I would sometimes sneak down there uh, at the end of the stairs. And because you didn't go down there alone, I'll tell you that much. Um, <laughs> when she was doing laundry and I would play with the alphabet letters there. So good memories with that for sure. It is also, uh, this is a day that we will always remember in our hearts, boys and girls. Uh, it is National Lost Sock Memorial Day. Um, <laughs> May 9th recognizes a fun and unique holiday, National Lost Sock Memorial Day. It is time to say goodbye to all the single socks, the ones where their mates have been lost to the unknown. Where do all the missing socks go? I would love to hear your take on that. Where do they go? Is there a machine washing heaven? Uh, is there, this is a question people have been trying to solve for many centuries. An answer may never be found to this problem and life will go on. How sad to have lost such a close knit friend. That was the most horrible joke I have ever said on air. Okay. Uh, so that's one thing that's going on today. It is also a uh, national women's checkup day. Ladies, don't forget to get your checkup. Uh, if you haven't done it in a while, go get that done. Um, and then uh, I, okay, let me get my disclaimer really quick here. Oh, see, I agree. Anne said they go with the Tupperware lids. That's where those socks go. Absolutely. Um, so I have to get the disclaimer up really quick. You guys get your snacks because it is butterscotch brownie day. I don't think that I've ever actually had a butterscotch brownie. I love the brownies, but I don't think, uh, apparently they're also known as blondies. So I've had blonde brownies, but I didn't, I don't, I never thought that they were Butter, called butterscotch brownies. Never knew that before. Um, apparently walnuts, pecans, or butterscotch chips are sometimes added to the brownies as well. And the recipes for these brownies date back to the 19th century. So I love blonde brownies, if that's what we're talking about here. But I had never heard of them as called butterscotch brownies. Have you guys? Because I would think of them as, I never had butterscotch in them, is what I'm saying. So I don't know. 
I'm, I'm, I'm interested now. But let me know if you plan on cel celebrating the Butterscotch Brownie Day today. Um, listen, guys, we're going to take a quick break and be right back after this with our special guest today. So don't go anywhere. We're going to talk more about mattering and we'll be right back. Breakthroughs are about more than you might think. They're about discovering who you are, digging deep, reaching to the core of your soul. They're about healing. Healing yourself, understanding your beliefs, creating a ripple effect. And it's not just those initial moments that matter. It's about using them to bring more joy into our own lives and the lives of others. It's about having fun, letting loose, enjoying every moment life has to offer. It's about finding a safe space. It's about creating connection. Join us each and every day for exclusive programming, special events, and a community to call home, where we invite you to explore, change the way you look at and live your life, and go beyond the breakthrough. So we ask you, are you ready? We'll see you online at thebreakthroughshow.com. Welcome back to Project Joy Live. I'm your host, Jessica Dugas. Today is Monday, May 9th, 2022, and I'm very excited to welcome back another guest today. But I want to remind you, you can join our Discord server to chat with other fans, meet past guests, and hosts from the Breakthrough Show Network. Just go to bit.ly slash Discord Breakthrough, bit.ly slash Discord Breakthrough. And any of my friends that are, that are joining us for our Pomodoro work session, um, I will be there right after the episode this morning to open that up for you guys today. So get ready for that. You can also join our Breakthrough Show Network text community for show notifications, insider info, and special offers. Just text the word breakthrough to 256-685-7092 in the U.S., Canada, and Puerto Rico. Um, and we appreciate all of our text community members as well. So uh, last Monday, we dove into the topic of mattering with our special guest, Shifra, and she's back today with some more in case you forgot somehow over the weekend. Um, she is the author of Dare to Matter. She is an experienced and accomplished speaker and radio host. And she, I personally love that every time she speaks, she creates such a warm, inviting environment to explore. So let's welcome her back to the show now. Welcome back, Shifra. Jessica, good morning. Good morning. Good to see you again today. It's good to see you. We've talked about stray socks, lost socks, butterscotch brownies. I mean, these are wonderful things to talk about. These are necessary topics. <laughs> Where do those socks go? I really think they just live in some obscure corner of a fitted sheet that is in the back of the closet. And... You know, in about 10 years, you take it out when you need that sheet and it's like, oh, there it is. Yeah. Anyway. Um, Absolutely. <laughs> Does it matter that we can't find these socks? <laughs> Maybe it matters to somebody who yeah. doesn't have another sock to wear and is going with one sock. I don't know. You know what I think happens here with us is so I'm I'm a barefoot girl now that because it's so hot here all the time and so and then I also love to go outside and put my bare feet on the ground and and I love earthing and and grounding and all of that and so I just think I don't I the socks don't matter <laughs> as much to me yeah um I, I actually like doing laundry that's the one thing I like to do is to fold laundry really I do. It's the only thing out of all the chores that one could possibly choose to like or not like. It's the folding of the laundry. I actually talk about that in my book, why that matters to me. Mm. But um, 
but we get ahead of ourselves. Um, let's talk a moment about Mother's Day. Yes. Because I like to share, <laughs> maybe this is a little weird and I shouldn't admit it, but um, I, I one of my daughters is still, still lives in the house and mm -hmm. we went to the store and what we decided was that um, we would look at cards together for me and decide which ones, if we were buying cards, which ones I would like to receive. Wow. So that, that's what we did. And um, I, we decided not, there was, and then my, my daughter said, well, what about for my daughter-in-law? She saw a card for a daughter-in-law and I read the card. I'm like, that's a great idea that I want to give my daughter-in-law a card. I don't really want a card. And then, but at night, my daughter did give me a card. I'm not sure when she bought it because she didn't <laughs> buy it with me. And it was, um, a, it was a most um, distinctive card. And I, I can't find it on my desk, but when you opened it, you could scan it with your phone. And when I did, she had made a little video of pictures of my kids. So again, you open the card, you see oh there was some type of a scannable item there. And she, and I I was able to open up a video that she put together of some of pictures. So it was it, that was that stop it. That is so cute. If I can find it before the end of today, I'll, I'll show it to you. Um, so that's what we did, yeah. And wow. I, I was thinking about it because um, in in the book, I there is a chapter on mothering and um, mattering as a mother. And of course, uh, one day a year affirms what we know every day of the year, mm -hmm. which is that mothers do, in fact, more than matter. Right? They power the world. And um, there's one quote I just want to read to you. Um, which is one of, you know, the most instructive, I think, about, about mothering. And that is, um, let's see, here it is. Well, two things. Another, no, number one, mothering is not a gender. It is a spirit. Because um, I talk about how my husband really mothered our children um, and modeled many times for me how, how to do how to do that. Um, and also... Um, Mothers are at their best when they can hold expansive hope and vision for their children until their children grow into their better selves. Mm. So we're never stopping done. We never stop being a mother, even mm. when our children are growing and grown and have children of their own. We're still mothering in some yeah. capacity. We're still showing up in their lives as their mothers. Yeah, I love that. And I love how you said mothering as a spirit, because I do think that there are, there are obviously so many people in the world that don't have children that aren't um, women and, and they they have that mothering, those mothering qualities, those, that mothering spirit for sure. Um, and I think that's an opportunity. I see a lot of posts on Mother's Day about um, people being upset about how it's Mother's Day because they they have trauma of some kind where their own biological mothers are concerned. Um, and and it's challenging because it's, you know, we go through these national holidays and holiday and other and and remembrances and all of that on this show all of the time. And we don't all fit in all of them. Some people really could be celebrating absolutely the lost sock day today. Um, and other people, we just don't, we think it's funny or we just don't care or whatever. And so not every, not every holiday, it might be something that applies to us, but we have the opportunity to make it what we want it to be. I think any yeah. holiday, right? You could always celebrate something about, Somewhere, something, yeah, yes. yeah, absolutely. And Donnell is here this morning. Good morning, Donnell. It is good to see you today. Make sure you guys check in and say hi if you are joining us this morning. So we've been talking about mattering, and last Monday we we talked about what is mattering. We had a wonderful conversation. But if you want to quickly recap that, what is mattering for everybody if they missed last week, so that then we can get into our topic today. We talked about mattering. I, I actually said I had a definition that I have not shared yet. It's at the end of the book. So perhaps at the end of the series. Yes. Uh, but mattering is not something that we can buy or that we can <laughs> borrow long term. It is something we have to create and we create it in bits and pieces as we move through our lives. Hmm. So it's not one thing and it's also not external to us. Um, mm -hmm. We choose things externally based on our internal barometer, if we want to have joy. 
if we are choosing things externally for their mattering that are not connected to our inner, that's going to create a lot of disturbance in our lives for ourselves and for others. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's the idea, um, matching that to our internal barometer. Then, then that's where all the mattering can happen. And we also spoke about that the magic of mattering is that when we matter and we make choices that show us what matter to us, that we allow that spirit of mattering to others as well. Mm. I love how it's a layered look. It's a it's layered and it's also dependent on the person. And I think that's the the biggest um, take home for me is that it, it varies depending on the person. So today we're going to talk about how does our mattering affect how we show up in our lives. And I shared at the beginning of the show that you know when we start talking about this idea of mattering, like so many other rabbit hole topics that we've talked about on this show before, a lot of people come into it and say, okay, but what does it matter that we're even talking about this? And I think this is one of those things that it can affect how we show up in our lives. So let's dive into this today. Right. So how does mattering affect how we, how we show up? So let's think about this a minute. Have you ever been somewhere where you were invited to come and to show up on very specific terms? Maybe you had to wear something specific. Maybe you had to speak in a particular way or not say certain things. There were conditions put on it. Um, as opposed to maybe being invited somewhere where you felt extremely comfortable and um, you could be who you really are. How does that feel to be in a space, into the, those different spaces? If you are invited into a place and you matter, um, who do you become? How do you act? How do you feel? Mm -hmm. What are you able to bring outside? What, you know, what are you able to offer others when you're in a certain space versus another? Let's think about that. Um, we've all been in places where we've been exceptionally comfortable and we know that we're valued for just how we show up, who we are. And there's nothing we have to do, say, be, or don't say, or don't do. Um, to make to 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 deserve our space there and what happens when we're in that space number one it, it is safe number two it is celebratory and watch you know watch who we are all of a sudden we can we have the capacity we have the access to a fuller range of who we are and our abilities right we can sometimes we can think more clearly we can express ourselves more clearly, um, as opposed to being in an environment where we're shut down to some degree, and that doesn't feel good. And it certainly doesn't evoke the best and brightest in us. Mm. So it does make a difference. Um, our mattering affects how we show up. If we don't wake up in the morning and feel that there's a piece of this day that we can inhabit fully, um, which is a cause for great joy, um, then that's a very different kind of waking up to the world than when we wake up and there's there's a world waiting for us to step into and we feel it and we engage with it and we step into it. Um, those are very different. So it very much does matter that we try to create each day into something that we that is that we want to step into. Um, we don't always get the choice. Sometimes we have to show up in places where we would rather not. Um, but those are choices that we make and they matter in a different way. Mm -hmm. We may not want to show up into a friend's life who needs us at that moment. Maybe it's inconvenient for us. Maybe we just rather do something else. But if that friend matters to us and we want to demonstrate wow. that, then we're making a choice mm -hmm. and we will bear the discomfort. And, you know, so... I think that um, there are a few rules that, or a few guidelines that we can talk about. But first, let me hear some comment from you. Yes, absolutely. Um, so good morning, Amanda. It's good to see you here this morning. Glad you are here to join us for our series again this week. Um, and 
you know, I was thinking about, um, you know, my communities that I've run before. And even with the Breakthrough Show Network, when we have our host meeting every last Friday of the month, all of us as hosts get together and, you know, just go over different things. And I always wanted it to be more of a community atmosphere rather than here's me as the creator of the network telling me what you need to do today. <laughs> That's just not, I wanted it to be very open. And so I always open the floor and say, what do you guys want to talk about? What do you want to share? And there have been times when no one has said anything and it's just like crickets, like, you know, and I, I get uncomfortable. I'm like, is there really nothing? But as I'm thinking about this now, perhaps in these situations, whether it's with that meeting or other times that I've held these spaces before, that maybe the people that have been there have been to other places where they have shared and it hasn't mattered. They felt like it hasn't mattered. So maybe they don't want to share again. So just something that I've considered as you were sharing about that, Shifra. You know, there's so much brilliance inside of everybody. And when they're allowed to be who they are, there's no telling how, you know, there's no telling what it's going to look like and sound like. And it really is very connected to mothering because if we can create that space for our children, then they, you know, I can tell a lot of times I can tell when I speak to people who was well mothered, whatever that means but who was given the space to be who they are and not shut down. And I often wonder, and we talked about this a little bit last week, what it would have been like for, for me personally to be in a space like that growing up. Um, well, you know, instead of living in conscious pushback um, and, you know, against the messages of not mattering, who would I be? What would I be doing? What would I be saying? I doubt I'd be, I doubt I'd I would have written this book, right? Because that's not where I was pushed to go. But in my, our experiences do push us to go to certain places. We may not have chosen them. As I said, I didn't choose this story. I only chose to tell it. And um, I do think that's part of the divine plan. I think instead of, you know, staying tied up in, a very negative energy about it, you take it and you leverage it and you say, okay, if I was put in this space, then, and you know, this is where the pain is. The pain is the prize. Keep your eyes on the pain because that is very often where a lot of your prize is. And it was destined that way. It mm -hmm. was, it was the challenges are not in the way they lead it. They're there for a reason. So I'm not saying we should purposely go look for suffering. You won't ever <laughs> hear me say that. And you won't ever <clears throat> hear me say to stay in suffering a moment longer than you need to. I don't believe mm -hmm. in that. Yeah. However, however, like I had this discussion with somebody else on a different podcast about uh, COVID. And after two years of, of COVID, are we different people? Have Has that, um, has that, uh, divinely ordained um, challenge in this world, has it gotten into our bones? We've done, we shifted in so many ways, in good ways. Um, are those, sh are we shifted sufficiently that now we can call it our own and move forward as a different, as different people? Mm -hmm. So again, don't ever stay in suffering a moment longer than you need to, or than is asked of you. Um, but while we are in a, in a situation, get from it everything you can. Learn mm -hmm. from it, grow from it, and move on. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I love that. And I wrote down the what you when you said I didn't choose this story, but I chose to tell it. Um, I love that as well. Um, Amanda was saying before I just recovered from this. I think she was talking about um, you know feeling like you get up and you have that in the morning and have that place to matter. Um, I couldn't for a while wake up and just feel happy, but I was determined. As long as you want it, anything is possible. Thank you for sharing that, Amanda. Um, and then she also said, yes, I got, I, I let go of the wall I built because I was forced to deal with my past. Um, that's another fun time <laughs> down the rabbit hole when we reflect, right? Yeah. I, I, I think that, you know, um, there's a balance like in everything we have to take the moments to reflect so that 
they can propel us forward. Um, and when we can take those moments to connect the dots, I call that process connecting the dots, um, we can come up with some very meaningful and purposeful direction in our lives. Sometimes we use the help of therapists. I certainly did. And I write about that in the book. Um, but um, often it's ourselves. It's just staying, staying inside, connecting the dots, seeing how things merge for us, and then um, beginning to make sense out of, out of the different pieces. Um, I, one of the guidelines I'd like to put forth um, is sometimes we have to unlearn some of the stuff we've been taught. And one of those things is I think we, some of us are taught either knowingly or unwittingly um, a, a hopelessness, you know, and a powerlessness. And they keep us very stuck. So we actually have to unlearn it in what I call learned hopefulness. We have to learn how to be hopeful. We have to learn how to get up in the morning and say, there is hope in this day. I can bring something to this day and this day will bring something to me and it will matter. Um, it's not always so natural to wake up with that. Um, we have to sometimes really think it through and make a choice around it. Um, and one of the biggest guidelines around all of that is what I taught my children. I don't have, a, I did not have a lot of rules raising my children. I'm not a big rule person. I couldn't, even if I knew the rules, even if I could figure out the rules, I couldn't enforce them. I couldn't enforce them. So what's the point? Like um, they knew very well, I'd say, if you don't do that, then, so what should be your punishment? Like I would ask them, I had no idea. Um, but one rule we had, was we do not compare one to the other. Mm -hmm. The minute we begin to compare is the minute we lose every hope, every dream, every bit of brightness about us. It dull <laughs> everything about us as soon as we compare. And by the way, that's a very hard thing because human beings seem wired to compare. Right. We have our senses. We take things in and then we automatically make judgments and discernments and distinctions, which is what we should do. But but where where they count yeah. um, and comparing and competing is a very dangerous illusion. And it is what I call an emotional idol. Mm -hmm. And if I don't smash that emotional idol among some other idols that I have. It will destroy me. It's really that simple. It's really that simple. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm excited because that specific topic that you mentioned, we're actually going to be talking about the final week of our of our series here. So make sure you stay tuned for that. You guys, um, the, the last Monday in May, we'll be talking about diving into the emotional idol part of this as well. Um, they, I, Amanda said, it's almost like they make us stop dreaming. As you were talking about different things, um, when I, when I started the breakthrough show, um, it was, it was something for me to do at the time. It was, you know, I had written in a book that became a bestseller and I had done some coaching, but wasn't really like, uh, I wasn't, I wasn't married to it. it I, I enjoy it, but I'm an extremely empathetic person. And it was difficult for me to balance the emotions of the eight of us in the house and then clients and then, and then, and then, and it was just a lot. So when I, I realized um, at that time, how much I loved um, having conversations with people. And that was a great way to be able to reach people through storytelling. And I did the show because it was, it, it mattered to me because it was something sharing these stories and sharing other people's stories mattered. And very back in, in the beginning, so this was 2018, when we were talking about this and I would meet other people about, um, you know, and they would ask me, why, why are you doing the show? And immediately go into the same questions that annoy the daylights out of me today, because I think they're personal, but how are you monetizing? And what is this leading to? And what are you, which are valid questions, but it, it's like, it, 
occurs to me that it's when I have these conversations with people, it's never enough for something to just matter to you. Like if you say it just matters to me to do this, they don't understand that. It's like, but how are you going to do this? And what is it leading to? And, and how are you going to make money? And how, and, and it's like, can it just matter? Is that okay, Shifra? Can something just matter <laughs> to us? And I feel like it almost, I bring this up because of what Amanda said, it's almost like it's just, it stops us. And it's like, is it enough for it to just matter? You know, our children can be very different one from the other. And somehow they seem to all matter to us. And um, even if, you know, they have a different set of talents and a different set of challenges too. I was one of those children who was a very challenging child. And I was put in a challenging position in my family and I was very different than my parents. And, you know, we talked a little bit about this. They were these pragmatic, purpose-driven people. And I'm this dreamy, imaginative, fearful child who they have no time to talk to. And so right, it's a very lonely existence. We're going to feel alone sometimes in standing in the spaces that we feel we need to, to be whole. I, I, you know, that's what it is to be part of the human race. Not everyone's going to get us. Not everyone's going to, you know, people are focused on what they're focused on. One of the, obviously one of the important things is to, to choose to be with people who, um, who value and celebrate the things that are coming from inside of us. And that if we take that away from ourselves, we're going to feel broken because we will be broken. Um, we need to, again, go, go towards the wholeness. And nobody can tell us what that looks like because we'll, we, have to, we have to create that for ourselves. So to answer your question, if somebody is depending on you to make money, for example, um, and you've decided and determined that that's one of the things you are going to do, then just, we just have to be realistic. Then maybe, you know, what is going to make the money? What isn't? you know, and, and balance that all out. Um, many of us have talents that we're not going to monetize, but we're still going to have them in our lives because um, our lives may, but may not be worth living otherwise. Like we have to, we have to, we have to balance this. We have to bring a lot of hard work to building our lives, which reminds me, I wanted to share something with you. Um, so of course we had the sad news that that Naomi Judd opted out of life, and um, she's been struggling very, very hard a lot of her life. And um, this is what in in an essay that her daughter wrote, Ashley Judd wrote. I wanted to. I was very struck by this. This is what she said: My mama was a legend. She was an artist and a storyteller, but she had to fight like hell to overcome the hand she was dealt to earn her place in history. She shouldn't have had to fight that hard to share her gifts with the world. That sentence got me. She shouldn't have had to fight that hard to share her gifts with the world. It is very disheartening when we have a gift, monetizing or not monetizing, right? I'm not talking about that right now, and there's nobody to receive it. That is devastating. That tells us what? That we don't matter. And um, who would choose a life to not matter? So the point is, though, that we have to create that. And eventually, <coughs> last week, I think, or maybe we didn't. There was, I don't think I did tell you this story. Let's do it. Do we have time for a quick, a yes. quick story? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, there's this tale that's told of a Chinese lady who's walking down a path and she ha she's holding two pails on her shoulder and one pail, they're, they're to, to fill their water pails. One pail is whole and one pail is cracked. And day after day, she's walking down the path and, and finally the broken pail who's leaking water all the time just is totally broken and says, I, I, I can't take the fact that I'm so cracked. I apologize to you the burden it puts on you and i i can't take it anymore and this woman says to the says i shows the um points to the flowers along the path and says do you see these flowers you are the reason 
These flowers adorn the road because you thought you were cracked, but do you know what came through your cracks? The water to water this beauty. So mattering is about perhaps, this is not my final definition, but it's about let the cracks happen. That's where the light is. Leonard Cohn said that. That's where the light is. Let the light in between the cracks. Mattering has a lot to do with that. I'm I'm taking it, I'm taking it all in. The um oh the the words of Naomi Judd's daughter uh was just beautiful. Um and I and I agree a hundred percent. Um Amanda said she felt that too of it, you know, we should not have to fight so hard. Um, to matter. Why, why do you think we do fight so hard? Is it just that we were missing that mattering? We're missing that mattering or, or what, why do we fight? Why do we feel like we have to fight so hard? Um, I think it is a very individual, there's an individual answer and there is a collective answer, right? The individual answer that I gave, I gave is about my story, how it all happened for me. Um, I have to tell you that I see some people not fighting so hard. And maybe they just feel that they, they're they given their mattering um, for whatever reason uh, more easily. Maybe people um, appreciate more readily what they have to offer. Um, I, I don't think, I just want to say, I don't think anybody gets a pass forever on, um, on feeling that they matter to everybody all the time for everything. That is not a possibility. So everyone has to grapple with this at some point. But, you know, I, I, I think that um, it's, it's a lot of it is societal. We talked about this last week, I think. Um, we are told how we can matter, you know, what we have to look like, what we have to sound like, what, how much money we have to have, what position we need to earn. We're given all of that as messages from our, cult, from our culture. So already we're fighting deep core messages the moment we open our eyes when we're born. It's just how it is. And I think that's, you know, that's part of the fight of being human and growing into our ourselves and into our divine spirits, right? I think we have to fight. We're here to work. We're here to work. That's, you know, and I think that, um, by the way, I think the process has huge amounts of prizes. The, we say the process is the prize. And we're always focused on, well, I want that prize. I'm doing this because I want that. And at some point, Somewhere along the line, we realize how fulfilled we are in a particular area with just the process, with just trying. And that is a very, can be very fulfilling. Um, writing the book, right? I, I wrote this book, Dare to Matter, and it's fulfilling to have the book. It's 340 pages, but the process was very engaging for me also. It was, it was very like, in a way, I like the process better than that. Because now, where do I go now? I don't have a page to go to, right? I have to turn the page and go somewhere else. So to answer your question, it's painful, but it's illusions. We have to realize we're, we are really smashing emotional idols. That is the work we are doing. And there are huge rewards for this. And the, what is the biggest joy and when we have joy, how do we really show up into our lives? There is an energy we didn't know existed inside of us. All of a sudden, we're riding on a different, on a different um, currency or on a different um, airwave, right? A different airspace, little less turbulence, um, floating, right? It's it's a different existence. We can't always be in that space, but we can get to that space a lot more quickly and stay there a lot longer. I love that. I love that. Listen, you guys, we're going to take a quick break and be right back after this to finish up with Shifra on Mattering today. We will be right back, you guys. And we're also listening to the For Love poem in Russian this morning by Olga. We'll be right back after this. Imagine a world where every child gets a great education. Educating all children is the only way to end poverty. This is what the Weiss Scholarship Foundation is working to accomplish. Our six staff members, our mentors and coordinators, who are on the ground in Kenya are totally engaged in every aspect of our students' lives, so we can give them every opportunity for success. In just a few short years, we have already awarded 141 scholarships. We send children to high school who would have never gone without our support. 
and then we help them go on to either university or vocational school. We have already scaled our holistic business model to four locations and are ready to scale it to many more. Today it's Kenya, but tomorrow it's more countries. Please contribute what you can today. You can make a one-time donation, a recurring donation, or choose to sponsor a child all on your own for all four years of high school for just $3,500. Go to our website, www.weissscholarshipfoundation.org. Любовь – моя крепость, любовь – моя крепость, даже с тяжелым сердцем, даже с поломанной душой. Любовь – моя крепость, потому что мир разорван, не только моя маленькая страна, где я обычно в безопасности, где мне обычно хорошо, а весь мир, каждый день. Любовь – моя крепость, потому что насилие излечимо, из еще больше мертвых, из власти сильны, без бомб. Любовь – моя крепость чтобы наши дети были невредимы, чтобы наши друзья были защищены, чтобы наши границы были открыты. Любовь – моя крепость, даже с тяжелым сердцем, даже с поломанной душой. Welcome back to Project Joy Live. We invite you to head over and visit our friends at the White Scholarship Foundation. You can visit scholarshipfoundation.org. And also we thank our lovely poet, Dorothy Oje for the For Love poem this morning, read beautifully by Olga in Russian. And um, thank you so much, Juju, for standing for love with us this morning. Um, Shifra, I'm, I'm loving this topic. And I had a question for you, but it was about relationships. So, and since we are talking next week about who and what gets in the way of our mattering, I'm going to save it for next week's conversation as as well. Let me know if any of you guys have any questions um, for Shifra this morning before we finish up the show. Uh, do you have anything you'd like to leave us with today, Shifra? Yeah, I'm just looking at the comments as well. Um, any comments? Um, don't shy away from the struggle. Um, we don't really have that choice anyway. Because we, we, you know, we have, we have one life to live. We have one life to make it all matter. And um, it's, and, and we, and we really don't know where our water leaking, what kind of beauty it's going to contribute to the world. We don't get to know that. We just get to live it and to believe that it's going to do its thing. Our trail is here. We don't get to see it yet, but it's here. I love that. And I loved that story about the um, about the, the buckets and the cracks and uh, had a wonderful impromptu live with, um, speaking of Dorothy Oje and Darren Sprinkle over on LinkedIn. They invited me randomly to do a live with them. They were just being creative and we were working on um, Darren's music and I was singing and he was playing guitar and we were having a good time. And um, and he was talking about how he went and spread, uh, he had wildflower seeds and he just, he just threw them, he just threw them. And now there's wildflowers everywhere. Uh, if you see wildflowers in Seattle, it was probably Darren. <laughs> you know, I, the way I just want, the way I say it is we never know in whose words or actions there's going to be your healing. Mm -hmm. We don't get to know that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And Amanda, about what you just said, I needed that in that order, period. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I know that um, everybody just has been so wonderful. Thank you all so much. And I know Juju came in and joined us this morning. Good morning, Juju. It's good to see you today. Um, Anne-Marie, thank you for joining us this morning as well. And Donnell, um, I appreciate all of you um, giving us uh, feedback throughout the episode as well. It's very helpful for both Shifra and I as we go through the episode. And I'm excited next week, Shifra, to, to figure out what gets in the way because it, this is going to be important, I think. Absolutely. Exciting. 
Yeah, absolutely. Yep. All right. Well, you guys, we have some amazing things coming up on the Breakthrough Show Network this week, which I'm excited about. Of course, we will be continuing our May <coughs> series throughout this month, Mattering, Empowerment, Professional Freedom, Leadership, Self-Mastery, lots of amazing things going on. If you missed any of the episodes from last week, you can always go to our YouTube page, uh, youtube.com slash C slash The Breakthrough Show, and always um, catch up on the episode episodes there or at the breakthrough show.com. Um, we also have coming up. So come up, coming up tomorrow, we are continuing our empowerment series with um, Laura Mazada and tomorrow will be professional empowerment. Really excited about that. Um, also, we have uh, Muddy Matters with Carol coming up tomorrow at 12 p.m. Central, 1 p.m. Eastern time. Always good to dive into these mindset pieces that we have going on about our money and finances. <laughs> Wednesday night, 6 p.m. Central time, 7 p.m. Eastern. We have Divine DNA with the Jacksons diving into relationships. And then on Friday, we are heading to the Netherlands with Vivian Aqua. It's going to be an amazing part of our Breakthroughs Around the World series, 12 p.m. Central, 1 p.m. Eastern time on Friday. So don't miss that. Um, lots of amazing things going on. And uh, we have to do birthdays this morning. Do you know anybody that has a birthday today, Sherpa? Today, I don't. Today. Uh, Nicole. One, um, yeah. We missed a couple birthdays on Saturday. So one of our uh, breakthrough alumni, uh, Adam Chaim, had a birthday on Saturday. And also my friend Yanni Ransom had a birthday. And then today, my friend Nicole Cox has a birthday. In the celebrity world, um, actress Amy Hill, actress Rosario Dawson, um, Dave Gone, you guys remember the band Depeche Mode? Anybody? Anyone? Uh, has a birthday today. And also one of my favorite uh, singers, songwriters, Billy Joel has a birthday today. So happy birthday, Billy Joel. All right, here we go. We're going to do our birthday song. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Nicole Cox, Adam Chain, Yanni Ransom, Billy Joel, Rosario Dawson, Dave Grohl, and Amy Hill. Happy birthday to you. Yes. Happy, happy, happy birthday to everybody selling, celebrating today. We really appreciate you and um, hope you have an amazing day. Shifra, thank you so much for being with us again today. It was fabulous. Thank you, Jessica. I, I enjoyed and I'm looking forward to next week as well. Thank you. Me too. Me too. Thank all of you for watching or listening wherever you are in the world today. I appreciate all of you who interacted with us live today. And I, of course, will be catching all of you that are on the replay as well. I appreciate you all for being here. I'm your host, Jessica Dugas, and I want to remind you to make joy a priority in your life today and every day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye, everybody. You've been tuned in to Project Joy Live with Jessica Dugas, your weekday morning talk show inviting you to start your day with a triple shot of good vibes only on the Breakthrough Show Network. Binge all past episodes of Project Joy at projectjoypodcast.com. Until next time, help us spread the joy by sharing this episode, and we'll see you soon.